Hey everybody. So here's the next step in our Anycubic Mono X versus Viper uh, filament printer, FDM printer uh, versus resin SLA shootout. So in the previous video I had covered really a lot of the logistic pieces, things that you'll need for equipment, uh, environment, things like that. Uh, today we're going to talk about print abilities uh, and considerations. So what you're looking at is uh, Cura, which is a free software for um, slicing and, and creating files for your Viper. It's recommended by Anycubic, which is why I'm using it. I uh, just wanted to get familiar with this. <coughs> there are others. Uh, I have four different models here in this layout, which you'll see. And I was torn uh, in this making this video. I was trying to think, do I m set these pieces up, just download the models, slap them on the build plates on both printers, let it rip, and see what happens? Um, I was about to do that, but then in considering that, I thought, that's not really how most people print. And you shouldn't print, and it's not really a... Is it really a test? It It is and it isn't, right? Uh, because no person is going to just download the file, slap it on the build plate, hit print, and let it rip. You, if that's what your expectation is, um, let me enlighten you to that that is, in a lot of, in a lot of cases, probably not going to be the case. Now, it depends, like everything in life, the question is it depends. Here, uh, Cura is used for the Viper, like I was describing, and this model here, and this model here, I did just that. I downloaded them, I slapped them on the build plate, and uh, if this is all, if this were all I were printing, uh, any one of these two, I would just hit print. Uh, and for a number of things that I've been printing, that has been the case. However, uh, in order to give it a fair shot at comparing it to resin, I also have these two models. So let me uh, let me show you what the models I have is. So I went to Thingiverse. Uh, I've got this Peafowl here, uh, which is a pretty cool looking peacock type high detail model I think will be interesting to try. I have this Blood Demon, which again uh, I picked because it has some interesting details that I think will highlight strengths and weaknesses of the different printers. I also have here this spherical roller, which is sort of an articulating uh, model type here. Uh, and I'll put links to all these in the description so you can try them out if you want. I'm using the textured version here, but this this is movable. And then the last one, uh, unfortunately this isn't free, but here's the link. Uh, I, I bought this from uh, Cults 3D. It's, it's this uh, flexible articulating print in place skeleton. So uh, I'll throw the, all these links in the in the description, but I think it will give you a pretty good idea as far as capabilities between the two printers, strengths, weaknesses, and it will uh, be a conversation around around some of those things. So I thought these were some some good examples. So in any event, to to give the uh, FDM a shot at printing some high detail model. Uh, I wanted to add supports and things. I didn't want to just slap the model on here and try to print it. It, in, in a lot of cases, would end up with spaghetti. And, by the way, not for nothing, uh, even in Lychee, y you have to support these models. A, a resin printer, you're not going to just slap these on here either and let them rip. Uh, you may get some degree of success. Like, for example, this sort of, I don't know, demon model here, you can see I leaned it back. This is how you would typically print a model that's got this type of detail, right? You you always want some of your most detailed parts. This one is particularly challenging because there are drop-off points in a lot of directions. There's spikes on the back that tilt down. There's horns here that tilt down and then up. You've got a, a jaw that tilts down. You've got fangs. You've got this uh, spear. There are like belt 
and loincloth type pieces that are pointing in all different directions. So there isn't an obvious like, well, I'll just orient it in this way and let it rip. Uh, so typically in that situation, what you'd do is you'd want to find a balance point between having some good uh, adhesion to the base plate. Obviously, this thing's going to have to print upside down. Uh, and so you want to make sure you've got the model oriented in such a way that you've got something strong to attach to. Uh, and you can see there's a lot here all along the back that the, that the model's going to build upside down. So e even on resin, uh, for a high detail model like this, the, the process is not download, drop it on the build plate, hit print, off you go. Uh, you do need to, in all cases, um, you know, orient the model potentially, and sometimes uh, a lot of people like to slice the model with something like Mesh Mixer, uh, save it out to a couple of different pieces and reassemble it, uh, which can make your um, experience or your outcome a little better. Uh, but for these pieces, I, I did just drop them on here. These two models, actually these three models, I've never printed before. I'm I'm trying to go at them with kind of a blind test here. Uh, in disclosure, I have printed this before. I've printed this several times, actually. Uh, this uh, skeleton model here, articulating skeleton, I've had mixed degrees of success. I did get this to articulate uh, on my Mono X. Uh, it's I did uh, print a few, though, that broke a lot of these joints. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Again, uh, over here, I used some, and look, to be, to be proficient with any tool, really, uh, this isn't just uh, exclusive to resin printers, but to, to be proficient with anything in anything, what you need is education. You need to research, you've got to experiment, and so I'm using a tree-type support here with some what would be considered i'm going to i'm going to say these are sort of 80% common level settings these are not uh high expert super experimental uh you know i've tried this 6 times and i'm working out the kinks types of settings these are what you would use as a starting point most likely when printing something like this you you'd probably go with these like for example here uh, you know, you m m most commonly you'd, you would tilt something like this back because it's got a lot of pointy bits. Yeah, uh, tilt it back a bit, throw some supports on, make sure things are supported. Uh, and there's a, there's a, of course a very clear uh, difference between the printers, but I'll call it out anyway, which is just sheer build volume, right? The the Viper is about three or three hundred fifty dollars. It has a much larger build volume than the Mono X, just in in build plate size, uh, and you can sort of tell that if I if if I pan this out, you can see I've I've got almost my entire build plate uh, full of models here, uh, whereas here there's there's all kinds of room, um, so uh, there's a lot more space here to print things out. Uh, but interestingly, there's a, a key difference here that I should call out now as I'm talking about it, which is there's an additive time component with FDM, and there's a different additive time component with resin printing. So let's talk about those real quick. Uh, for filament-based printing, you've got your plate and your nozzle is moving, moving around uh, printing and also the base plate typically is is moving the more items on the plate the more things to be printed the more time it adds uh, so if you fill this build plate with items obviously this is estimating 12 plus hours for this print uh, these I have the same four items in the same exact uh, scale and size dimensions on on the Mono X, and it's only estimating three hours thirty eight minutes, which in reality, actually, I find Lychee, uh is is off in its estimation, uh, and that's partially because I, depending on your your speed and your lift uh, and your exposure time, it's not 
really exact as far as its estimation goes. It even says this is just a guess. I find it off to be off by about 25% in its estimate. Uh, this is uh, off a little, but not 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 too crazy. Uh, and that's because AnyCubic did provide this profile for the for the Viper to Cura, so it's a little more accurate. However, for this particular model, a, cu a couple things I modified. Uh, I'm not printing at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. I am printing at a 1 millimeter layer height to uh, do a great closer comparison um, with with the Mono X. In the resin, I'm printing the solid. Uh, and so interestingly, the factor for resin is height. Height is your slowdown. So if you've got a ton of stuff, if you've got one object, if you've got just this, uh, and it's this high, or you've got a build plate full of objects this high, they're all going to take the exact same amount of time. Because your only, uh, your only dimension for printing is this Z axis, right? There's no other movement. It's going to create a, either a single shape or a bunch of shapes on your build plate. It doesn't matter. Layer by layer, uh, those this something this high is going to take the same uh, time. So by adding this skeleton here, I've added no time to my print uh, because it's shorter <laughs> and so it's not going to take any more time and if I filled the build plate with skeletons and I had this this is going to be the maximum time of the print now because the peacock is the tallest uh, um, all the other parts are going to be of course um, at the mercy of the time of the tallest piece fine uh, like I said in filament based printing the more items you add the longer your time gets because all of this has to print out and the print head has to move and everything has to move so I've got both of these files saved to their respective flash drives uh, I'm gonna bring them down to the printer get the printers set up uh, all right so let's get started I've got both of the cards loaded into the machines uh, and we'll get this preheating real quick prepare preheat Preheat PLA takes about two minutes. Okay, uh, for prep for this machine, you prep for the Mono X. I have a couple of bottles of Elegoo Standard Gray resin warming up a uh, little heater here, and the machine just takes about a second to boot up. Um, that's about the that's about the extent of it. Just let that warm up. So let me gra grab some gloves, and while the Viper heats up. I can just pour some resin in the Mono X and get that started. To handle resin, you always need gloves. Uh, probably going to throw goggles on too. Let's pull this off. Got a nice space over here to do this. And what I'll probably do, let me just head over to my tools. Let me move Z up. I often don't go all the way to this max line. You can. Uh, for the parts I'm printing, it probably won't need it, but I'll just go just shy of the max line just in case. My file is already on the Mono X. So, and off we go. Print. Boom. The cool thing about the Viper is, if it's not up to temp, it'll wait, come up to temp, and then let it rip. So, it takes just a couple minutes. Okay, here we go. Gives you a cool little diagram of what it's printing at the moment. If I'm printing a pyramid here, the base is going to take longer than the tip, obviously, right? Because that's how it's printing. Not the case with resin printing. Let's, let's use the pyramid scenario again. If you're printing something large, and then you have all your fine, fine details, we'll be pointing down away uh, from the build plate. As you're getting finer and finer details, less and less, uh, less and less material and, and things, it's okay to speed up your print as you go. 
I would love to see some kind of adaptive speed setting come to this model where it's like, of course, your first several layers are going to be large, heavy, long cure times. That's all to establish good adhesion to the build plate. Most of the stuff is going to be sort of bigger at the bottom, finer details toward the end of the print. If there were some sort of adaptive uh, speed setting, what you would do is slow this early stuff down. And as you're printing less and less, if you are printing less and less, uh, you know, if you're printing a, 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 a cylinder, well, okay, it's, it's the same from beginning to end. If you're printing like like we're printing, and most people are printing, if you're printing min minis or, or figurines and things, you're always going to print your put your fine details away from the build plate. I say up, it's actually down, because uh, it's upside down. But uh, those fine details, you can pick up speed with those fine details um, a little bit. You don't want to go crazy, because you might mess them up. They are uh, delicate. Okay. We'll check in on it in a bit. This is another interesting difference between the printers. It's really difficult to tell the status of anything, really, until the print height is a certain level. So this skeleton is complete. The height of the model is now past the skeleton and the spinny bearing. All that's left now that it's printing is the two high detail models. But I can't see anything. You really can't see until this uh, build platform can raise high enough. Now, fortunately, if you want to sort of cheat this system, what you can do is get into the settings and change your height for a few for a few of the of the prints change this height instead of like popping like this you can change the height to you know 15 or something and it'll come up to here and you can get a look at it underneath and then it'll drop back down and you can change it again here you can very clearly see and you can see i have a camera here uh, and i can just remote into that anytime from my phone or from a, a desktop and i can see the status of my printer here uh with this i have the mobile app that i can check in on and uh, you've got a lot of nice status. I like that it counts down in reverse, right? Here's my current state, and also here's where I'm at. We're at 396 of 1491, uh, and it's counting backwards, right? It says it has just about three hours, one minute remaining, and we are at 26%. So uh, over here, we're at 6%. Uh, for the same four models and to be clear this is twice the layer height of this this is half the layer height this is 0 0.05 layer height this is 0 0.1 layer height so imagine if this is going to be 12 plus hours at 0 0.1 if it were 0 0.05 it theoretically should be twice as long as that 24 hours where this is only about, let's call it four and a half -ish. Interesting, so this has been printing for three hours, 35 minutes, and something weird has happened. You can sort of see. That should be a perfect, perfectly aligned uh, cylinder pattern. And here too, you can sort of see it should be lining up and something happened where everything is shifted over by like a quarter of an inch so rather than let this run for like another I don't know 15 hours or something I'm probably going to cancel this and try a different print on the other hand uh, this is almost done has about a half an hour left and if you look
you can see skelly bones is there you can see that other print is there and these other two these other two prints are printing away so my print time here was four hours ten minutes our first set of uh, four models is complete and here it is let me throw a little light under there so you can sort of admire this so it looks like looks like everything we intended to print printed without any kind of catastrophe which is not always the case so I'm gonna pop these off clean them up and we'll see how they do so what I've got here is sort of my cleaning tools prepared I've got a bin here to wash these parts out uh, I've got some scrapers toothbrush clippers uh, all these things various parts to help me get the part off of the bill plate and this is 99.9 .9 alcohol I have some rags all of that will get cleaned up in here I've also prepared my uh, curing cabinet that's already sort of rotating and then I can just close this up and hit the UV light and I'm ready to go so I'm going to pull these parts off so you can check them out this is one of the really fun parts about resin printing you really can't see what the hell's going on until you get this thing off and flip it over so just wanted to see what it looked like with all the supports on so it, it looks hideous but these will all uh, come off pretty easily and we'll see what we're left with like you can see that one just came off came off pretty easily from the sort of chin area here these will all pop off pretty easily uh, I would not on something this delicate like this spear uh, force them by hand uh, I tend to use medium supports especially anything tall like these uh, I prefer a medium support. I've had better luck with a medium support. Anyway, a lot of support theory out there. You can go nuts uh, watching all that. Most of this stuff, because it's flat, you could really just take your thumb and crack all this off. But I'm going to go through and, especially back here and along the spear, clip these with a pair of really small snips because this could very easily get broken in the removal of our supports. Here's the skeleton. He's supposed to be articulating. You saw that little dancing video. He's in anything but articulating. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, likewise with this. This is supposed to be spinning. It is not because of this backside. Uh, and here's the peacock, which, from what I can tell, is looking pretty good. So, anyway, I'll get these cleaned up. I wanted you to see the supports on these before I took them off and see the parts as they were removed from the from the base anyway i will get these cleaned up and then we'll take a look at them okay now that our models are all printed uh let's take a look at the results the differences the pros and cons uh and i'll talk a little bit about even my experience uh printing so i did have some difficulty printing um some of the filament based pieces for whatever reason, I was having some trouble with adhesion, getting things like this, getting things like this. You can see it was like the part was like shifting. I was having problems with this small, mostly it was this model and the uh, some of these really small pieces not adhering well to the build plate. Um, and then it would sort of knock the part off and everything would sort of shimmy off to the side like this. I did even try putting a big... Um, putting the raft here and that uh you can see once it once it knocked one of these pieces loose it started shifting uh the print over so what i opted to do was print each of the um filament based pieces individually uh, i think it also i think it also saved some time believe it or not because the, the time is definitely additive, as we discussed, on filament-based printing. So if you print just this piece, it may be three hours. If you print this and this, or this and this, uh, it's not just like the time for this model and the time for this model. There's also the time to get between these two models. So uh, there's, there's a little bit uh, of a multiplying factor for printing more and more and more things on your build plate because 
that's more ground for the nozzle to have to cover. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of the two different material types or the technology types. Uh, and I think I think this is kind of a good example. Uh, but that can also happen. It did not happen uh, with resin this time. That's not to say it can't. Uh, but you can certainly have a failure with, let's say, one piece that's starting to make a pancake. And now you've got an issue where uh, it, it could disrupt the printing of the other parts. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. In some cases, just that one part will pancake and the rest of the items on the build surface will print okay. Uh, so, mileage may vary. It was probably to my advantage to print all of these individually because then I could then I could tune the settings to each thing. So, for example, I printed this at 0.1 layer height while I printed this with a 0.2 layer height. Uh, and you can see, while I'm picking this up, you can see that this, this does move uh, sort of the way it's supposed to. Everything sort of spins... Uh, as designed. Now that did take a little encouragement. I'm not going to say I just picked it up off the build plate like this and it was moving. Right, I picked it up off the build plate and I did sort of have to kind of get the parts working uh, so that they move, but they did they did eventually uh, get to their spinning part. And this model, by the way, uh, was printed at 75% of the size. So uh, I would think if I had printed it at 100% of the size, I may have had um, may have had even better luck with it but like i said it's fine uh this one on the other hand the resin maybe i'll put this a little closer the resin one looks great uh but i mean it's entirely immovable and there is just no hope of making this uh movable now i did print this flat to the build surface uh which for resin printing especially if you're going to try to print something articulating that is just a bad idea in general anyway um, but for the purpose of demonstration, I wanted to print them both on the on the right on the build surface and see. But you can see they, uh, you know, they actually came out quality-wise. It, it's not dramatic uh, between the two. I did get a sort of weird line happening here, but um, that probably could be corrected with um, if I had had a better um, adhesion. Uh, to the to the built surface but in any event so this this obviously adhered very well it was actually really tough to get off um, and I even it didn't look like this I I scoured around this to see if I could get this to move at all uh, and there's there's just no there's just no chance it's it's printed uh, almost like one solid piece so those likewise our friend skelly bones here uh, you can see skelly bones looks great really nice and smooth but is totally solid and the material if, if you try to get these joints bending you would just snap this uh, this also printed flat on the build plate also the same size to, to be fair I tried to make everything the same scale uh, this was printed at point one also pretty nice smooth looking model really overall but you know fully articulating it did take a little bit of time to kind of work these joints free they didn't come out pretty clean uh, but once once you get them rolling they're uh, you know working quite well again I did not print this at a hundred percent I believe I printed this at 50 percent which is pretty bold uh, for an articulating model it's usually probably a good idea to try to print them a hundred percent because that's how the designer made them to be printed but again I downsized these these are 50% of the model size uh, very different experience as far as being able to print the uh, the articulation versus there's just no chance now again I printed this flat on the build surface you would definitely want to pick this up put a line of supports underneath and if you did that you would likely get better results uh, although still not likely to have the kind of space in joints this small to be able to have an articulating model so i would say if your goal is articulating pieces like one part articulating pieces definitely 
um, filament is is superior for that purpose. Uh, likewise, if you're going to print a multi-part model that needs to be sort of snapped together, for example, well, this is this is something that I tested in. Uh, I'm trying to print this in on my resin printer, obviously, but uh, you know there are some models that have segmented legs like this that that snap together. You snap all the pieces together. Uh, there is no snap with resin unless you um, unless you mix it with something that's a little more flexible. There is a, a flexible resin. Like I said, it's pretty expensive. Uh, so okay, material wise, there's not a lot of uh, flexibility with this. It's almost like a ceramic type material. If you try to flex it, it's, like you can see there's a little flex here. It's just going to snap, crack, shatter off. Uh, okay, so strengths for uh, print in place um, articulating models, I have to say, especially anything with some tight uh, tolerances is going to be um, filament is going to be what you need there. Now, now let's talk about high detail. Uh, and oh, I just wanted to show you these are these are um, printed with tree supports. So I'll have to clean these up, but I wanted you to see what this looked like with the supports on before I pulled it off. So let me get the supports off of these high detail pieces and see. And I actually printed this twice with a couple of different settings to try to give the best comparison I could. So I'll grab the other one of these, clean it up, and we'll t we'll do a comparison. Okay. So I got my parts out of the support and. Uh, what I used here is the tree type of auto support in Cura. And you can see it was sort of encased on the part like this. It was very tricky to get off, but I did it. And let's take a look. So, uh, this took about just a little over three, three, almost close to four hours. And of course, this was encased in lots of supports too when you saw it. Uh, but. Think looking pretty good and then same size or same scale I guess believe it or not uh, and so I, I, I wrote fast on the bottom of this so I printed this at 80 millimeters a second uh, 0 0.1 resolution and 10% infill so it's hollow and uh, this took longer definitely uh, especially with all of that support that was wrapped around it I think this was closer to like five and a half or six hours so uh, and this is solid there's no I didn't hollow this model out at all but hopefully you can you can can see the differences between the two so and I have to say if I spend a little more time cleaning up the the spe spear and the model and things, uh, you could probably get get this nice and clean. This um, also could use a tiny bit more cleanup, especially before it's being painted and things. But uh, I think overall, it's going to depend. And like I said at the start of this, it really it really depends on what you're trying to do. Like guys with the peacocks. Uh, similar um, 0 0.1 millimeter this is 0 0.5 which is sort of not fair um, uh, but that's the sort of default print height of um, the photon mono X but I mean that's some pretty good detail where things start to go wrong is kind of down here you know this is a much more solid this I broke of course getting it out of the getting it out of its tangle but quality wise quality wise we'll uh, we'll focus in up here which I think will give you a good a good idea here the flowers are sort of nice and crisp here the flowers are a little more uh, I would say sort of, I don't know, 
not quite as detailed, a little more scratched, scratch looking. But on these surfaces, at least, the feathers, the body, the face, the head, this plumage and stuff, the FDM actually did pretty good. Uh, so, I think that, I think that really summarizes really easily what the two printers are, what their strong suits had. Now, can you get near as quality, this quality, with filament? Maybe, yeah. I mean, there are a lot, there are people out there that swear by, uh, mini settings. And I tried them actually. You can see here I broke this getting the supports off, but I tried printing this at 0 0.08 at 20 millimeters a second speed with 100% infill. And I, w I would not say the, the outcome was any better. As a matter of fact, I might say it's worse. Uh, so certainly if you are going to print try to print like sm really small figurines and things or or uh minis and things like that uh with filament you'll have to really dial in your settings and process specifically for that like anything which is true uh and likewise i do have a flexible skeleton that i printed in resin but it took several tries I put a bunch of supports underneath, I sort of put it up on a bed of spikes, I printed it much larger to give the joints um, an opportunity to drain and not freeze like this. Uh, and so you you can, but it takes time to sort of dial these things in uh, if, if you're trying to do one with the other. What, what I'm trying to demonstrate is, this is almost like out of the box, I did very little uh, to factory settings essentially to get a result like this this is certainly the forte or strong suit of, of resin printing uh, and likewise something like this which is a drill guide for uh, you know an articulating model stuff like this uh, much more utility so I'll give you my my wrap up okay so we've discussed some of the pros and cons and now let me tell you why uh what my journey was how i came into this and how i decided on the printers i decided on i started with the photon mono x uh wanting the high detail right i decided um you know i'm gonna go after high detail stuff and print out uh things in uh, that type of resolution and technology and material, not realizing some of the caveats uh, or some of the downsides of resin versus filament. And so, I would say this. If you are someone who's going to want to print a lot of high-detail parts, figurines, minis, statues, things of that nature... Hands down, no choice, no question, resin is the way to go. It is relatively easy. It's much faster. This is at 0 0.5. I think this printer can print at an even higher resolution than this. I'm not even sure why you'd need to, because uh, that is pretty fantastic. And this is, uh, for for scale, if you can't tell, uh, I had a had a pencil next to it uh, before but this is about two and a half inches tall so uh, you could definitely print something even even smaller even finer detail fine very small details uh, would be easily achievable with this uh, resins a little more expensive I find I was buying a one liter Elegoo Standard Gray, which is, uh, you know, I think a good quality, but still uh, inexpensive resin, and I had good luck with it uh, as far as printing goes, so I stuck with it, and I think that was somewhere in the realm of about, I want to say close to 30 32 $33 for a liter. Uh, so, high detail pretty quick volume uh 
I would say resin based is for you. That's so that's why I like the Mono X for that purpose. Uh, and when you want to print something like that, certainly that's my go-to. However, after having the resin based uh, printer for a while, you know, I wanted to just print some utility things. So this is great, but it is made out of resin. I wouldn't want this on my skin for any time. I really wouldn't even sort of trust this for a child's toy, for example, or something. It is, even though it's cured resin and should be harmless, uh, you would want to sort of treat this, paint this, do something to it. And it's, I would argue, it's primarily for display purposes. There's very little flexibility, at least in, in this particular resin type, unless you blend or, or intentionally go after a resin type, but there are lots of pros and cons. Uh, with that, again, you'd have to dial it in. Okay. Uh, but for t utility types of things, like just a lot of stuff you'd find on Thingiverse, something like this, which is just like a drill guide, um, you know, widgets and, and fidget things, uh, you know, purpose type things like this is a uh, some uh, roller I was working on printing you know anything like that uh, I would say hands down again the the winner for that would be filament it is quick and easy to, to um, get these parts banged out this thing was as simple to print as it looks like I downloaded it it was sitting on the build plate like this I snapped it off and off I go. I didn't have to do anything to it, and I have my part. And it was fast. It was it was uh, printed well. So for those types of utility things, household items, things you intend to use, uh, you have a lot more opportunity to do those kinds of things in filament. You can print in PLA. You can print in ABS. You can print in TPU. That's sort of like generic plastic uh abs would be even harder plastic you can print an abs in resin also uh um or abs they call it abs like resin it's still not exactly abs but you can print an abs which is what a lot of household items are printed out of um and tpu is like a very flexible type of material like a sort of a soft phone case uh and, and again you can also print in a wood sort of plastic wood um, composite type of material that gives you sort of a wood looking type of uh, output so you have a lot more opportunity in material it has a lot more utility uh, as far as use around the house for household items and uh, last but not least i find the prices for a uh, spool of filament to be much less expensive uh, so I'm using, I'm still using the very first roll of Gitech white PLA that I bought. And I think that was $17 on Amazon when I got it. So, uh, that is, was a 1kg roll, but, uh, that was a, uh, you know, one kilogram roll, but, uh, here's the gray. I think this one, I think the gray, I think, the, you know, the price is volatile. It does sort of move up and down a little bit, but, um, in any event, I've, I've been having some good luck with this. Not, they're not a sponsor or anything, although that would be great, but, uh, yeah, I've been having some, some good luck with that filament. So I got the gray and the gray was a little more expensive. So uh, I think that's, I think that sums it up for me. If you are new to 3d printing you have to really decide like like anything what are you what are you after high detail large or small static mm, statue types of parts i think resin is your go-to utility based home home items toys things you can use around the house uh, I'm probably going to print a uh, bracket, for example, to hold an Apple TV. I uh, printed some earrings. I printed, um, you know, like I said, this drill guide and, and some sort of fidget toys and some other things. Household types of items, things you're going to use, touch, interact with uh, in some way. 
uh, or you just or expect them to behave like a piece of plastic uh, that has some flex to it, uh, some snap, some assembly, uh, those kinds of things. I think you got to go with a filament-based printer. Um, I think you, you'll you'll be much better off. Uh, with having that so I like and if you're really lucky uh, you can have them both and and do uh, do what you will um, depending on what you need to print but uh, but if you're trying to decide one uh, and get your feet wet in one I highly recommend the Viper for a starter printer is it a great beginner printer I say yes if you are new to printing uh, I think I think you really enjoy it um, and like I said, it was pretty much fire it up, let it rip, and I had my little owl in no time. Uh, the auto level's been working great. I like this build surface. I haven't really had any problems with this surface. I was able to update the firmware, although I don't know what... what uh, th there's no new features in the firmware. It's probably just some bug fixing and maybe some compatibility and things. Uh, anyway, highly recommend the Viper as a starter printer. Really easy to get rolling with it, easy enough to assemble. And you can get some great quality prints out of it. On the other hand, if you're looking to do some high detail work, and like I said, you can get some articulating parts out of this. This is in resin. It's a little flexible lizard from Thingiverse, uh, and it works fine. And this was even printed flat to the build surface. You can see a little bit of what's called elephant's foot here. on the hand, which means it sort of, when it was adhering to the build plate, um, it sort of extra hardens these build surfaces, and it makes them kind of fan out a little more than the part. It's a little wider than what the part should be. Uh, in any event, though, because these, and I have a separate uh, video on articulating models with resin, it is doable, of course. Uh, you have to have the right hinge type but again primary use for something like the mono x would be high detail static not really highly highly interactive models okay i hope you enjoyed that uh series i tried to keep it kind of crisp and i'm gonna have some other uh some other videos coming up. I try to release once a week. So, thanks for watching.